I don't feel I'm creative. And one is people who has received a lot of luck and a lot of chance. Because Why is chance more important than conscious intellect? Because intelligence. I've made images that intellect would never make. There's a painting called Painting 1946, which somehow summarizes what you became known for. And uh, it was a painting of dead flesh, of meat. In that particular painting, I try to paint a bird falling into a <clears throat> field of, of grass. And then all the kind of marks I've made on the canvas suddenly suggested this painting, which had absolutely nothing to do with it. And how this painting came about, I, I can't tell you. But it just happened to come about, and then I suddenly started to paint the meat, and this great image, which is of a kind of dictator, and then the meat around him, it just happened to evolve, and it evolved very, very quickly. And how it happened, I don't know. It is one of the most unconscious paintings I've ever done. Why the meat? I mean, what attracted you to that? I um, used to think how marvellous these extraordinary carcasses are hanging really? in great butcher shops. Yes hanging from the wall, how amazing their colour was, how beautiful they looked. You say they're beautiful. A lot of people looking at your paintings think of them as um, horror images, images of shock, images of blood and dread, and not beautiful at all. Well, the thing is, what horror, what could I make to compete what, ha what goes on every single day? If you read the newspapers, if you look at television, if you know what's going on in the world, what could I do that competes with the horror that's going on? Except that I have tried to make images of it, and I have tried to recreate it and make not the horror, but I've tried to make images of realism. So when we look at your paintings, we're looking at the real world? Yes. I believe you are. After all, between birth and death, it's always been the same thing. There's always been this aspect, always, of... Um, not aspect, but it's what it is. It is the violence of life. I always think that they're images of, um, of sensation. After all, what is life but sensation? What we feel, what happens. What happens at the moment? What happens at the moment. Do you think there's anything that exists apart from the moment? No, I believe in nothing. We are born and we die and that's it. There's nothing else. So what do you do about it? I don't do anything about it. You I just, it. I just drift. No, Francis, you try to paint it. I try to paint it, yes. But uh, you talk about my own life. But my own life is just a drifting life of going from bar to bar and drinking and that kind of thing. My impulse is my life. My impulse is that um, <clears throat> I'm an old man, but I'm profoundly optimistic about nothing. I've, I've How can you be opt optimistic about nothing, Francis? I can be. Why? I'm just existing for a moment. Existing today makes me optimistic. Optimistic about what? Nothing. I'm optimistic about nothing. I'm just born with that kind of optimistic nature. I'm just optimistic about nothing. Why are you interested in the mouth in your painting? I can tell you why, because many years ago in Paris I bought a book which is on disease of the mouth. And then they were hand-illustrated hand things which were, which were very beautiful. And um, I love the mouth because it's rather like the mouth is rather like uh, a, a, a turner. 
It's got this all these beautiful colours about yeah. it. It's got these lovely vibrations of colour between the tongue, the lips, the teeth, all those things. But Francis, most of your mouths are black. My, I've never been able to make the really successful mouth. <laughs> Tell me about the history of painting flesh, Francis. Well, perhaps the, one of the greatest painters of, of female flesh was Ahring. Uh, I think he made the most marvellous images of them, and I think they are probably some of the greatest. Um, the, um, in a curious way, the most sexual bodies that have been made of um, in, in painting. No man, probably, who didn't love women's flesh would be able to have painted as something as beautiful as a Bantuk. And do you find the same when you paint? I, uh, I have different attitudes to life than to you, and, uh, of course, but uh, my attitudes are different. Do you want to talk about that? I don't know not what Well, I can about. talk about it. Well, let's yes. talk about it. What attitudes do you have? I like men. Of course, male, male flesh is very interesting. It always attracts me, but um, that's, a, that's a different thing altogether. And what attracts you about men? Just like men. I like their brain, I like the quality of their flesh. You obviously love Michelangelo's men. I, I think the greatest things he ever did were the drawings. But I think they're the, most, the greatest drawings that exist. You said, I've read that you have said, that he gave the most uh, expansive, you used better words. You said the I'll most... I'll tell you what he, I said. I think he gave the greatest male voluptuousness. Voluptuous, voluptuousness. That's it, that's the Yes. Word. Voluptuous. To the male body. That's right, that's right. That's any the, other man has ever done. Mm. Don't you think it's and a bit kind of... Volupte is all we want, voluptuousness. Yeah, but, yes, I know, it's wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it a lovely Absolutely word? Absolutely amazing. I actually, uh, we want to live in a state of voluptuousness. How right you do. are, whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. And everything else is a falling away. Whatever it is, everything else <laughs> is a falling away. Is a falling away. That's right.